Have you seen watercolor painting process reels where the paint just dances across the paper? Have you tried to create these same paintings without much success? In this YouTube tutorial, I'll be sharing the basics of how to create these beautiful and magical watercolor bleeds. The first thing I want to talk about is watercolor supplies. The most important supply when creating the most effortless watercolor bleeds are going to be the watercolor paint itself. In general, paints made with honey as the pigment binder tend to move much more easily when painting wet on wet. This isn't to say every brand of paint with honey moves well and brands that aren't made with honey don't move well, but just in general, my experience um, using honey-based watercolor paints is just that there's much more movement. My favorite brand of watercolor paint to do these types of bleeds are by the company M. Graham. Another brand of paint that is also known for its movement is the brand Core. I don't believe Core paints are made with honey, but they definitely have excellent movement. The type of watercolor paper also matters. Working with 100% cotton paper is ideal because the volume of water we will be working with is just a lot, and this sometimes um, helps prevent buckling of your paper. And I also find that round brushes with a really short bristle head is ideal because it keeps the paint really concentrated and that's what we want when we are making these watercolor bleeds. So here I have a block of watercolor paper. I got this block off of Amazon and it has hot pressed paper. And in this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you a few ways that I like to sort of paint these watercolor bleeds. So right here I have just a um, jar of water and I have a flat brush that I like for wetting my paper. So I'm gonna wet just the upper half of the paper. This paper actually isn't um, kind of glued down on the sides because I painted on the back side. So I'm just gonna use some tape and I'm gonna tape it down. Now I'm gonna grab, this is my Etcher Round 6 brush. I really like it for these bleeds because it's so small and I can just pick up a concentrated glob of paint. And then I'm just gonna re-wet the paper a little bit because it's kind of gotten a little dry. And I'm gonna start on the, on the right side and I'm just gonna drop paint right at the bottom of where um, the water is. And I'm gonna sort of lift my block a little bit and you can already see um, so much movement. And so I'm gonna grab some Viridian and drop some in on the bottom. I usually like to pick one or two colors that sort of would complement each other or would look nice um, mixed together. In the beginning of this tutorial, I did mention that my favorite 
brand of watercolors to do this type of um, watercolor bleeding with is the brand M. Graham. But I did um, get these new core paints and I didn't really have a chance to sort of check them out so I'm playing around with them for this tutorial. But for M. Graham, I have a good number of their colors and the colors that um, really have good movement to me are ultramarine, dioxazine, purple, their thalos, thalo blue, thalo green, um, both of those have good movement, turquoise, um, those are the ones that move the most um, in my memory. I'll also list in the description of this video the different supplies that are used. The second way I like to do these types of um, paintings is to actually get some masking tape and tape off the upper half of our paper and this sort of um, makes the water or what I wanted to do is I want the water to sort of pull, pool at where the masking tape is and then I can get um, kind of like a really good bleed right at that tape line. And I'm going to use more of the um, core because I just love this magenta color. And so this is really similar to the last technique, um, but it's just kind of using masking tape. And I just kind of sometimes like using it. And I'm going to grab my brush and wet the lower half of the paper. And this time I'm going to grab some M. Graham Ultramarine Blue. And I'm going to drop it on the lower half. And yeah, there's just so much movement. I, I love it. It's so pretty. And I like to add more water with a flat brush. I really just encourage you to play. There's really no right or wrong. And this is part of what I love about watercolor. Just sort of seeing where the paint goes. And I find it fun and therapeutic. So find the supplies that you like. And just don't be afraid to play around and sort of just... It's just so relaxing and therapeutic. And then for our third and last little exercise, I am actually going to show you how I like to paint um, some of my landscapes 
with what I call my watercolor bloom trees. And so I have some 100% cotton. This is actually um, rough grain paper by Bao Hong. This is their um, Academy um, rough grain line. It is one of my favorite types of watercolor paper and I'm just taping it down to this little plastic board that I have right here. And then once everything is taped down, I'm going to grab my flat brush again and I'm going to wet like the upper three quarters of the landscape. And I'm going to start by painting um, the sky. So I'm using um, my Polina Bright Round 2 and I'm picking up some um, lavender and some blue for the sky. So I'm using, these are paints by Addison and Segwick. She is a handmade paint maker on Etsy. Um, she's one of my favorite paint makers. Her paints are made with honey and um, they just have really, really great movement. It was actually her paints that sort of made me fall in love with um, just how watercolor can move. And so um, I'm just sort of keeping our sky kind of light. Um, I want it lighter because I want the trees to sort of really stand out. And so I don't want to go too dark um, with our sky. And then now I'm going to grab a color called Vintage Violet. It's my favorite color from Carrie. Um, she doesn't currently have any in stock on her Etsy um, store, but she, I know, is working on a restock. So I think within the next month or so we should be able to buy more of this. But this color is just stunning. It's a deep purple with like the most subtle shimmer and it just dances on paper like it moves so well so you can see you can see where the water is um because you can see it glistening and I'm just going to drop some paint sort of right at the bottom kind of like what we did in the previous exercises but I'm gonna sort of guide it to sort of make this like tree and so I don't have like you know, complete control over where the watercolor is going, but the idea with these watercolor bloom trees is that you would sort of guide them or use your round brush to sort of guide the general shape of the tree. Um, and then we sort of can, we can fill in the rest. And so I like the centers of my tree to be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to grab a little bit more vintage violet and sort of darken the center of the tree. And I I just love how that looks. It's so fun. So now I'm going to grab my flat brush again and I'm going to wet um, that bottom part but I'm going to keep like a slither of dry paper because that's going to be where we kind of paint our trunks. So I'm going to grab some brown. I'm going to wipe pick up this excess water right here but I'm going to draw a few trunks for these trees. And I like how it just sort of bleeds into the bottom right after we paint our little tree trunk. And then now I'm going to pick up some green. This green is called Vondel Park. 
and I'm just going to do some like really loose swipes at the bottom to sort of give it that um, sort of grassy feel. And then I like how the tree trunk sort of bleeds into the green and kind of gives it that, um, that like loose feel. Now I'm going to wipe the edges to pick up excess water. We want to be, when we're painting these, um, these watercolor bleed landscapes, I use I use a lot of water, not, I mean, it's not like pooling everywhere, but it is more water than I would normally use. So I always am careful to kind of pick up those pockets of water, especially when I am using my hot air tool so that I don't get sort of like a bloom from like a little droplet of water. And to finish off this little landscape of ours, I've been really obsessed with painting metallic birds. So I'm gonna grab my metallic paint. I'm gonna grab some purple because our landscape is has a lot of purple and I'm gonna just paint some birds lightly. And that's it. I hope you enjoy learning about watercolor blooms with me. If you liked this tutorial, please hit the like button. It's a really small way to help my channel grow. And if you enjoy my content, use the following QR codes to either find me on Patreon or Instagram.